I made this coffee table about 15 years ago and like any piece of furniture that gets used there's signs of wear and tear. Now I'd like to clean the coffee table up but I don't necessarily want to remove all of the old finish. So in this video I'm going to show you how I can make this coffee table look almost new simply by applying a wiping varnish. To prepare for the project the first thing I'm going to do is remove the drawer and I want to remove the drawer pull and I'm going to put a little arrow so I know which way the drawer pull goes back. Now I'm going to put the coffee table upside down so I can remove the top. The top is attached to the coffee table with four screws and you notice that the screws are basically in the center of the coffee table allowing the top to expand and contract. I wanted to point out my signature uh, basically because I think it's a good habit to get into signing and dating the furniture that you make because it's a lot like keeping a journal and in fact I had thought that I had made this piece of furniture closer to 10 years ago when actually it's closer to 20 years ago now uh, and to make the signature I use something called a burning pen and you can find a burning pen at any arts and crafts store. With the coffee table disassembled, I'm ready to get started, but I thought I would take a close-up of the top to point out some of these surface scratches. This is the problem area and this is what I want to get rid of. Now to get started, I'm going to wipe the whole coffee table down with 4-0 steel wool and a little paint thinner. That's to remove any grease or oil that may be on the piece of furniture. I finished wiping down the coffee table with the 4-0 steel wool and now I'm removing any of the paint thinner with a clean rag. Now I'm going to take the coffee table outside and give it a light sanding with silicone carbide 320 sandpaper and I'm going to do it outside because I don't want to make dust inside the studio here. A brand new piece of 320 is still a little bit coarse, so if you have an old piece that's better and if you don't what I like to do is just knock it down a little bit by rubbing the paper together. And that brings it down to maybe 4, 420. Well I bought the coffee table back into the studio. I removed all of the dust with a clean paper towel and now I'm ready to apply the wiping varnish and I'm using a product called Water Locks and I'm going to apply the wiping varnish with a clean cotton rag. A good rule of thumb when applying the varnish or really any finish for that matter is always to try to work in the direction of the grain. I let the finish dry overnight and now I'm going to buff the finish out using a product called Wool Lube uh, Buffing Paste. I'll put a photograph of the can on my website and uh, this product works great. I've been using it for years. It just smooths the finish out, eliminates those little bumps and gives the wood a nice soft feel. Now I'm going to buff out the base of the coffee table and the drawer front. As for the top, I'm going to re repeat the sanding and applying the finish probably three or four more times because if you think about it that's really where most of the wear and tear is going to happen so I want a couple more coats on the top. This is a brand new can. My last can lasted me almost 20 years. To rub the finish out I'm going to use a little bit of the wool loop paste and gently rub in the direction of the grain and I'm using 4-0 steel wool. See the shiny surface here? This is what the wool lube is really good for. It just mellows that out a little bit and smooths the finish. After I finished rubbing down the piece of furniture with the steel wool and the wool lube, 
The next step is to remove any of the wool lube residue with a clean paper towel. Before I end the video, I thought I'd take a minute and talk a little bit about some of the design decisions that were made when building this piece of furniture. Now, it's basically all mortise and tenon. This piece right here uh, not only strengthens the coffee table, but it keeps the drawer from tipping forward. The piece on the bottom here is what the drawer runs on. These two side rails here, they strengthen the piece and also give uh, a box for that drawer to float in. You may have noticed that the wood in the top rail and the bottom rail and the drawer are all cut from the same piece of wood. You can see the grain go through the drawer. And the way that's done is the board is cut into three pieces and then the drawer is cross cut out and that piece is taken and put to the side and then the boards are rejoined. Now this is an important attention to detail and it's something to think about if you're building and designing your own pieces of furniture. And really that's the difference between making something or buying something handmade and buying something that is maybe from a big box store. Well, I'm not ready to attach the top to the base yet, but I wanted to take a minute and talk about the piece of wood that I chose for the top because it obviously has a few imperfections, but that's kind of uh, the reason why I chose it. This is what's referred to sometimes as a flame mahogany. Now, it has a really beautiful grain, but in this case, there are also voids. So I decided that I would just fill the voids. And what I use to fill the voids is a West System epoxy with rosewood sawdust. And the reason why I use the rosewood sawdust is because it's darker. And I think a good rule of thumb when you're filling an imperfection in wood is to always go darker. Because if you think about it in nature, your imperfections are generally going to be darker. So if you look at a board and you see a knot, the knot and the wood around that knot is generally darker. Okay, well I'm not going to video the several coats of finish that I'm going to apply to the top because I'm just repeating the process of sanding the top down with 320 and then reapplying the water locks with a clean cotton rag. Now I hope that didn't get too boring. I know some people are really interested in uh, some of the design ideas and uh, the wood species and things like that. I know I am, but some people really just don't care. Uh, if you got something out of it, please leave a comment, uh, like me on Facebook, subscribe, check out johnpeters.com. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next time.